Hey, movie fans. So I just got back from seeing Matt Reeves' as The Batman, the highly anticipated return, new arrival of the Batman mythos, so to speak, the newest incarnation we've had. Tim Burton's take, we've had Joel Schumacher's take, we've had Christian Nolan's take, we've had Zack Snyder's take. Now we have Matt Reeves' take on the iconic Bat legend. How does it stack up to previous incarnations? It is really good. I don't know if I'm buying into it as much as some other reviews that I'm seeing are, but overall, I really liked it. It's not a perfect movie, but it's probably the closest to a perfect Batman movie we've gotten so far, if that makes sense. I have some some minor issues with it that we'll delve into, but by and large, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, and I like the direction that we seem to be going in in the future with these Batman movies. So let's break it all down. The goods, the minor bads, and we'll bring it back around to the, some goods. Make it a good sandwich. The goods, Robert Pattinson to me is Batman. Like, holy crap. I was always on board with his casting and I was totally justified in my mind here. I think he's absolutely phenomenal as the Cape Crusader. Also, I will give massive props to Robert Pattinson, and this is not a spoiler in any sense, but he is completely selfless in this role in that you spend a majority of this film with Batman, not Bruce Wayne. And a lot of actors would want their faces to be shown. They're the headliners of a movie. I want the, I want my face to be on the posters and everything else. You very rarely see Bruce Wayne in this. He's still, uh, he's still a factor, but by and large, this is a Batman centric movie. This is the most Batman you have ever seen in live action form. And I absolutely loved his incarnation. I loved that it was just Batman for most of this. We still get some Bruce Wayne, but it's so Batman forward. The rest of the cast is really, really excellent. Zoe Kravitz is amazing as Catwoman. I think she's got fantastic chemistry with Robert Pattinson. Colin Farrell is completely unrecognizable as the Penguin. We already kind of knew that going into it. He's awesome, albeit very limited in his role as we kind of figured. There's a lot of characters in this that are good but are very limited in their roles that are clearly just kind of there for future reference of okay this is our version of alfred great by andy circus he's awesome but clearly will play a much bigger role later paul dano as the riddler is so so good i would put him in the category of like best batman villains of all time had we gotten more of him without delving too much into it we take kind of a side track at some point in the story. That's where it kind of loses me. Of uh, We kind of, the Riddler's main storyline is still peppered throughout, but we kind of take a subplot to get to a further development down the road. And I don't always buy into that specific subplot. It's not as engaging to me as the Riddler stuff because guys, when it's true Riddler form and it's Batman versus Riddler and like trying to figure out clues, it's awesome. Like we had heard going into this, that this was going to be a detective story. It absolutely is. And it's something I've wanted for a Batman movie forever. Prove to me that you are the world's greatest detective. And he absolutely is the world's greatest detective in this of uh, any riddle that comes across and basically he figured out just like that. Like he knows it off the top of his head. He's really good with ciphers and, um, he could pick up on trends and patterns. It's so cool to see him work. It's like CSI Batman, so to speak. CSI Gotham, I guess, would be the correct terminology. Uh, the mystery aspect is awesome. The action, while more limited than you might expect, is great. Like, great choreography, great action. However, I do kind of wish there was more of it. I don't always need non-stop wall-to-wall action. This is clearly a different take. This has more in line with like seven than it does Avengers Endgame in terms of its action. Um, but I could have used one or two more action scenes. That being said, this action that we do get is fantastic. The car chase between Batman and Penguin that you see in the trailers, also amazing. I'm not a big car guy, but oh boy, that Batmobile is sexy and I need that car so bad as a Lego, which I already do because, you know, I'm a nerd like that. I did say I have some negatives though with this movie. I think the first half of this movie is so incredibly strong and I was just locked in. It does kind of meander a little bit in the second half and in the finale. I don't know if the finale quite sticks it. I'm not saying it's a bad finale by any stretch of the imagination, but the first half is so strong 
that the finale, by comparison, kind of feels a little anticlimactic. And like I said, there's a subplot in this that takes up a good chunk of time towards mm, maybe around the 60 or 70 percent mark through the movie. I'm going, I'm not as invested in this. I understand that it plays a role in the larger narrative, but I'm not invested in this specific part of it. Uh, I also said that it's a big cast. Everyone's perfect in it. But naturally, if you've got a cast this big, some things are going to get shortchanged. You're not going to get a lot of Alfred in this. You're not going to get a lot of Penguin. Gordon is great, but I could have used a little more of him. I understand it's a Batman movie and Batman's the main focus, but I guess that's the sign of good storytelling is you're left wanting more of specific characters. And I was left wanting more Alfred, more Gordon, more Penguin. So hopefully we get more of that going forward. So to bring it back around to the positives again... Michael Giacchino's score will probably go down as one of the best superhero scores of all time. Like, it, me, could I could just be jumping the gun here, but the Batman theme that he uses for this, I already feel like is iconic. It's so good. He uses this great sense of dread for Batman. Batman kind of feels like the boogeyman. Which, speaking of boogeyman, for those diehard Halloween fans out there, there's a scene with the Riddler. You'll know it when you see it that had to have been a loving homage to the original John Carpenter's Halloween. You'll know it when you see him going, that, that's that got to be Halloween reference. That's like ripping from Halloween exactly. It, it's awesome. I, I It made me very, very excited. The music is phenomenal. The cinematography is phenomenal. This movie is gorgeous to watch. Every shot is just a masterclass in filmmaking. I think this is one of the best made movies I've seen so far. This is probably one of the best made Batman movies, period, in terms of just the cinematography, the storytelling is way beyond most Batman stories. It's the most complex movie I've seen since The Dark Knight. And I don't just mean in terms of narrative, just in terms of denseness. There's a lot going on for better, for worse. For the most part, it's for better. It's not always perfect, but I think the narrative in this is incredibly strong and I'm very much excited for the future direction that these Batman movies are gonna take. Uh, there's a lot of fun Easter eggs to other events or other locations uh, in this new Reeves universe that we could see explored someday that I very much like to see. Uh, there's certain characters that are not necessarily set up, but I would like them to be further expounded upon in the future. Overall, I really like this. I don't know if I'd say it's the best Batman movie or even the best movie about Batman that's been made so far because there is a clear difference, I think. Um, but it is really good. I think top three Batman movies of all time right off the bat. Um, I'll need to see it more to kind of really solidify what I truly think about it. But this movie is something special. I really am I'm happy that it was able to live up to the hype for the most part. It's not a perfect movie. But it's probably one of the best Batman, just pure Batman outings we've gotten possibly ever. So if you're on the fence at all or slightly curious about this movie, I'd say absolutely go check it out because it's it's a really good time. It's just probably going to be a little bit different than what you're expecting, which is not necessarily a bad thing. What would you guys think? Have you seen the Batman? Are you excited for it? Are you not? Are you going to see it this weekend? Let me know your thoughts, whatever they may be, in the comments down below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, help us get to 700 subscribers. That's our goal for the end of the year. Check out the Uncharted Media podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, stay sharp with you guys and gals.